The war in Afghanistan started 20 years ago after 9-1-1 during the George W. Bush administration. The Obama administration announced a troop withdrawal in 2014, but repeatedly delayed it. In 2020, the Trump administration signed an agreement with the Taliban and confirmed that U.S. troops would be withdrawn by May 2021. A few months ago, the Biden administration committed to complete withdrawal by August the 31st, but the exit from Afghanistan turned into a disaster, and the Chinese Communist Party is using it to attack American credibility. How will it impact Sino-U.S. competition and Taiwan Strait? Hi everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. By the end of July, the Taliban already controlled most of Afghanistan. On July the 28th, the head of the Taliban political committee, Abdul Ghani Barada, led a delegation to visit China and met with China's foreign minister, Wang Yi. As if he was aware of what would ensue in the following weeks, Wang called the Taliban a pivotal military and political force in Afghanistan and hoped it would play an important role in the peaceful reconciliation and reconstruction of the country. This meeting legitimized the terrorist group in regard to international diplomacy and greatly boosted its confidence. On the same day the Taliban was meeting with Wang, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken was meeting with the Indian External Affairs Minister in New Delhi. At the joint press conference, Blinken addressed the situation in Afghanistan. He said the United States will continue to support the Afghan government and President Ghani and assist in bringing together the Ghani government and the Taliban. But his remarks showed, in hindsight, the lack of sound assessment of the real situation. The day after Wang hosted the Taliban delegation, on July the 29th, the Chinese embassy in Kabul warned its nationals to leave the country. But the American embassy didn't ask its citizens to leave until nine days later on August the 7th. Five days later, on the 12th, when the American embassy told Americans to leave the country immediately, American media outlets were still saying that U.S. intelligence believed that the Taliban would take control in months, if not weeks. But only three days later, Taliban resumed power. The Americans were caught off guard and caught in a situation that should not have happened. Noticing the obvious disconnect within the Biden administration, Beijing immediately took advantage of the situation and escalated the Taiwan Strait tension. Three days after the Taliban took Kabul, 11 warplanes belonging to the People's Liberation Army, or PLA, entered Taiwan's air defense zone minutes before the island's military was about to start an exercise. The six fighter jets, two bombers, and three surveillance aircraft flew into Taiwan's Southwest Air Defense Zone on August the 18th. The Taiwanese Air Force responded by scrambling jets to shadow the airplanes, issuing radio warnings, and deploying air defense missile systems to monitor their activity. Several local news media outlets reported that a PLA Y-8 electric warfare aircraft had entered the firing target zone, ignoring the warning to stay away. Meanwhile, CCP media outlets are saying that if the Taliban can win Afghanistan in nine days, the CCP can win Taiwan in a few hours, and that the United States will repeat the scene in Kabul. The CCP mouthpiece Global Times issued an editorial that warned Taiwan about the U.S. The abandonment of Afghanistan is a lesson for Taiwan. Pro-CCP Taiwanese media reacted and started questioning Americans' ability and willingness to protect Taiwan. Some Americans believe that the U.S. should not leave Afghanistan. Facing such chaos, there's one important fact we can't lose track of. That is, for its own advantage, the CCP does not want the U.S. to withdraw from Afghanistan. Here are four reasons why the Chinese Communist regime wants to see American troops remain in the region. Afghanistan is thousands of miles away from the U.S., but it borders China. The CCP is very aware that after the U.S. troops leave, it will inherit the problems that the United States leaves behind and is not happy about that. 
The United States has worked hard for 20 years to maintain order in Afghanistan, which was like putting the CCP's backyard in order. America's effort to bring stability to the country has allowed Beijing to do business there. Afghanistan has the world's largest unexploited reserves of copper, coal, cobalt, mercury, gold, and lithium, valued at over 1 trillion US dollars. In recent years, Beijing has increased its economic presence in Afghanistan and is its largest foreign investor. The CCP is now worried about the security of its local investments and the Belt and Road projects. After U.S. security forces withdrawal, the turbulent situation will not only challenge the CCP's economic interests in Afghanistan, but also may threaten its borders and security. Cross-border crime, drug trafficking, and smuggling of firearms have proliferated in the region during the past decade. A few months ago, in anticipation of upcoming unrest, the Chinese army reinforced its presence along the Wakhan Corridor, which forms a 70 kilometer or 43 miles border between China and Afghanistan. Beijing is also worried that the withdrawal of U.S. troops may lead to the spread of major Islamic rebellion to Xinjiang, and Afghanistan will become a safe haven for the East Turkestan Islamic movement, a group that Beijing blames for causing instability in Xinjiang. The CCP hopes to see the United States continue to be tangled up in the longest war in American history because it has eroded American national wealth and moral confidence. The United States has already spent $2.2 trillion on the war, with 21,000 soldiers wounded and almost 2,500 soldiers killed. In fact, the CCP has always regarded the U.S. wars in Afghanistan and Iraq as golden opportunities for its own strategic growth. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said in March that while the United States focused on the fight against terrorism in the Middle East, the CCP was advancing its military modernization at high speed. Robert Spaulding, a retired general and China expert, said this two years ago about the CCP intention. And that if we stayed distracted by the middle, in the Middle East uh, or in Europe and in, uh, or in Asia with uh, North Korea, that they could continue to slowly erode our competitive advantage. In essence, they want us to spend upwards as much money as we can on defense because that is not their uh, area uh, where they want to uh, 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 compete with us. They want us to actually um, bankrupt ourselves. That's their goal. The CCP's biggest worry is that when the United States extricates itself from the war in the Middle East, the U.S. will have more energy and resources to focus on the Taiwan Strait, which is a point of contention between the two countries. Experienced American troops will be redeployed to the Indo-Pacific region against PLA soldiers who have not had any recent war experience. And this is exactly what the CCP doesn't want to see. The withdrawal from Afghanistan reflects the shift of America's strategic focus away from the Middle East to the Indo-Pacific region, and Taiwan is the center stage. Geographically, Taiwan is the first island up against the CCP in the Pacific island chain. It is a democratic society and is highly industrialized, with the world's largest semiconductor manufacturing capability. Even the CCP mouthpiece Global Times admitted that Taiwan is probably the U.S. most cost-effective ally in East Asia. For the time being, the Taliban and the CCP are buddies because they have a common enemy. The Taliban needs the CCP's investments and support in the international community, so it will cooperate. And the CCP will continue to use the Taliban to entrap the Americans, ensuring that they stay in the region. The Biden administration must immediately fix its internal disconnects and not let the CCP take advantage of the situation. It must focus on the threat in the Pacific immediately. American allies should not be distracted by the Afghan aftermath and should stick together. 
They must avoid falling into the CCP's divide and conquer trap. And although teamwork is good and certainly necessary, every country, large or small, also should be independent and responsible when defending its own sovereignty. I'll stay on top of the situation and keep you updated. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.